Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today begins our post-rotation deck analysis. Today, starting with Mega Rayquaza. It's one that's been pretty well hyped, um, just straight off the bat because of its potential speed and aggressiveness. Um, you know, it's really been not able to stretch its legs and be a part of our format because of the likes of Night March and to an extent Mega Manetric as well. Uh, but now those things have rotated and um, there's a gap in the market for a new hard hitting fast deck and Rayquaza is going to look to try and fill that gap. So um, in front of you is a list with uh, Magina and Metal Energy. I've seen a few people arguing about the best way to uh, pair up Mega Rayquaza because of course he's a colorless attacker um, so all of those discussions are going to happen after I talk about the initial list and uh, we'll talk about some differences and changes that you could make to the deck. For now though, we'll jump straight into it. So uh, we are having a 2-2 split of the Rayquazas. It used to be a full 4 count of this Rayquaza EX um, because it had weakness to Fairy rather than Lightning. Um, now, actually there's quite a few Fairies that we have to watch out for, uh, mainly Xerneas Break, um, but also there's both Mega Gardevoirs that we have to watch out for. So uh, we're having a split here. Uh, they both pack an attack that we can go for. Dragon Claw for 30 for a double colorless. Isn't gonna help us help us out too much because obviously Joltik's gone. So we're not really knocking anything out anymore. We're not even setting up many KOs um, unless we are doing an initial 30 damage to a Giratina, um, which can actually be quite helpful. So do bear that in mind. Um, and then there's the other Rayquaza, which has a slightly better, more efficient attack against EXs. We do 10 base plus 50 more damage if they are an EX. So we get to do that initial 60 uh, for just one colorless, which is a bit more efficient. Uh, obviously this Rayquaza has 10 less HP, so be aware. And it has a different weakness, which helps out as well. So I like the split. I think it's a little bit safer, gives us options. So pretty cool stuff there. And then we have the Mega. It does have the Ancient Trait, um, Delta Evolution. So we can evolve into a Mega on the very first turn. So that means if we're going first, we don't need to find Spirit Link. We can just end our turn by going Mega. And if we're going second, we're going to try and uh, get an attack off on the very first turn of the game. Because even though his attack cost is three colorless, we do have DC in the deck and we have Mega Turbo. So with a big convoluted combo, we will sometimes be able to get turn one Emerald Break, uh, which is why this deck is, you know, vying for top contender of being you know, like the pace setter of the format, just like Night March was really. On top of that, he's a lot tankier. 220 HP is nice. A weakness to Lightning is something we do have to be aware of because there are the likes of uh, Raichu and Zeb Striker that people are talking about. Um, there's also a few other Pokemon like Zoroark and even the Fight Alone Lucario that you have to be aware of um, because these things can also sometimes counter Rayquaza because they do more damage based on your own bench size. Um, to a certain extent we can play around like Zoroark and we can play around um, Lucario but uh, the likes of Raichu and Zeb Striker really are awkward. Um, we're not playing the Altaria line in here but it's something I would highly advise um, if you are going to take this deck seriously and if people take Rayquaza seriously. Right now I'm not even thinking it's the best deck in format. It's the first one I wanted to profile because there was just hype around it. But in testing, I'm finding it's losing quite a few games, to be perfectly honest. So I don't think, you know, many people will be playing Zeb Striker or Raichu, you know, like midway through the format. So I think you can get away without Altaria. But maybe in the first opening tournaments, you want to play like a 1-1 one -one line of Altaria just to um, help out with that weakness. Following on from that, we have a bunch of EXs. Obviously, Hooper is like a really big card in this deck. Uh, every Ultra Ball is pretty much going to go for Hooper in the early turns because that Scoundrel Ring is going to help thin the deck of a lot of Pokemon uh, and fill up our bench as well, because obviously Rayquaza's Emerald Break does 30 times the amount of our bench Pokemon. So Hooper is a bench Pokemon himself, and he can find potentially three more basics. So that's, you know, potentially 120 damage from one Ultra Ball, which is great. Uh, in, you know, all the while it's going to be getting you Shamans to draw more cards, get you Rayquaza's, which are your attackers. So just immense value in this deck. It's kind of why we play two. We want to have access to it as early as possible. But additionally, when people bounce the Skyfield with their own stadium or delinquent or whatever else, um, we need to refresh our bench so that we, you know, have more output for Rayquaza. So again, that Scoundrel Ring is going to come in very handy to us. Uh, following on from that, we have the four Shaman EX. The full four count is pretty nice in here. 
Uh, again, just access on the early turns. You want to see Shaman as often as possible because it's a big combo that we're going for here. Uh, we need to set up to draw a lot of cards. Uh, we are playing the two Magirna EX in this deck. Uh, it's for the ability Mystic Heart, preventing all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to each of your Pokemon that has any metal energy attached. This is really helpful actually for the Mega Scizor matchup. Um, Scizor is a deck that I'm going to be profiling pretty soon, and I think it's, you know, if they're not playing Magirna, it's a really fairly favourable matchup for Scizor. Um, so we threw the Magirna in here. This is after me and Jack playtested with the initial build of Manaphy EX uh, for free retreat, and we feel. Um, it wasn't doing a good enough shift. I'll get onto that in a moment. Uh, for now, we're happy with the Magirna EX. Additionally, it's a steel type, um, so we hit for weakness on the likes of um, Xerneas, which is helpful, and it's a, just a regular EX that hits good numbers for dealing with uh, Giratina. Um, Soul Blaster does 120 for a metal DCE, and um, next turn it does just the 60, but we're still two hitting the um, Giratina, so that's you know fine as long as they don't have um, Fury Belts attached. So that's something to be aware of when we are in desperate straits against Giratina, which you know Giratina is meant to be countering the likes of Mega Rayquaza. So having the attacking option of Magina is pretty cool. Rounding out the deck, we have one Non EX in here. At the moment, I've gone for Bunnelby just because it's a nice you know resourceful card, gets us back you know different things if we're going to be running low on deck. Also, of course, we can. Uh, turn it onto the opponent for a bit of aggressive milling as well, if need be. Um, Battle compressors out the format, so there's a lot, you know, normally thicker deck sizes, but still people will, you know, sometimes be forced to run through their deck quite quickly to keep up with Rayquaza, so Bunnelby can sometimes punish them. Basically, I just want one non EX in this deck so that we can try and seven prize game people when we have no other options to win the game. Uh, a few different slots for this, which I'll get onto later. Right now, it's the Bunnelby, but I could see this changing into a couple of things. Onto the items now, we are playing uh, the one of Escape Rope. This is going to help us get around the likes of um, Regice and Glaceon and even to an extent Giratina as well as being a switching card for us. It could be a usual switch but I'm happy with Escape Rope right now um, as our option. We do also have the one Floatstone as well, uh, I'm happy with Float. So two switching cards is kind of making up for the fact that we don't play Manaphy in here. Uh, bear in mind, of course, we don't have um, AZ anymore, so Lysander Stalling is potentially an option. Uh, we can sometimes mitigate that by using Special Charge to get back DCE so that we can like pay retreat on the stuff like Hooper. Um, so I feel fairly confident with the two full switching cards. Uh, moving on to Special Charge, yes, it can help out stopping us uh, being Lysander Stalled for games, but also, of course, it's going to recover DCE so that we can keep going with Rayquaza's um, Keep a good stream going even when we're under N um, to you know carry on and just keep attacking. We are playing two Super Odd. Obviously, Sacred Ash has been rotated, which is unfortunate for Rayquaza. We're in this annoying middle ground before Karen is legal, um, where we're stuck with a slightly weak item to try and recover our Pokemon, which is a bit of a concern um, when people are going to try and play like Parallel City to um, counter this deck. Uh, so two super roll I think is fine. Um, one thing we notably don't have in the deck is puzzles. Um, so yeah, we have to be very careful with these super rods. Uh, we are playing three mega turbo, helps us accelerate to get that turn one emerald break, as well as just accelerating throughout the game to keep a steady stream of attackers going. Four trainers mail, four ultra ball and four VS seeker. This is something that isn't changing just because we need the speed, we need the raw consistency. Ultra Ball, so much value with Hooper in this deck, it's absurd to be honest, and everything else is very handy as well. You need to have the full 4 VS Seek account, I've flirted with going down to 3, not happy with it, especially when there's so many different things we have to be concerned with. Like Giratina, we have to hex through them like 3-4 times um, to deal with them, and you know, sometimes adding Ranger to the mix, we've got to be hitting our Lysanders when need be in the likes of mirror matches if we're not getting our 1 hit KOs. Um, just so many reasons why we need the full four count, especially because we have Shaman EX to draw cards as well. I feel like we'll n naturally find access to the physical Sycamores and the physical N that we play in the deck. Um, so we can be a bit cheekier and have the VS Seekers for options, uh, which is pretty cool. On to our supporters. The one ofs is going to be Pokemon Ranger. It helps us get over the likes of Regice and Glaceon, just like I was saying with the Escape Rope. 
Also going to be hugely important against Giratina. Obviously, it means we can't damage the Giratina the turn that we Ranger, um, but it does mean that we can attach DCEs, which is you know what we need to attack with, and it means we can put Skyfield into play um, so that we can fill up our bench enough to knock them out the following turn as long as they don't replace the Stadium. A bit of a risk to do that, but mainly it's just so that we can attach DCE so that we don't just straight up lose the game. As well, it can help out against Jirachi promo, where they're going to get rid of our specials and then we can't deal with it next turn. Now we can just range us straight through it. And we do have the one N in here as well. I do like the option of shuffle draw when we have resources that we can't really afford to get rid of. The likes of Super Odd and Special Charge early on in the game can be awkward, so ending those back, shuffling them in for safekeeping later on can be helpful. As well as, um, you know, we need to limit the opponent's hand size as well sometimes if they're keeping up with us or if it's like a mirror match or something quite important the two ofs we're playing two lysander important to have the two count especially in this format because compressor's gone um so we need to find access to this as often as possible same kind of thing for hex but really hex maniac we want to see on turn one um, one of the best things about rayquaza is you can get a really dominant setup just via shaman and hooper alone and then you incorporate hex in the mix and your opponent can't use their own hoopers and their own shamans to get their setup really really important when we're thinking that it's going to be a fairly mega heavy meta game so denying turn one hoopers for the opponent whilst getting it for yourself is going to be huge uh, so two hex is great for that going to be great for greninja and of course we need the high count to deal with giratina and stopping cleft key as well so so many reasons why hex is great in here um, denies so much it's just a really good card to have a two of running out with three sycamore would kind of like four, but at the same time, we like a fairly low overall support account so that we are drawing as many cards as possible with Shaman without it just clogging the hand. Uh, so there we go. Uh, the full four Skyfield, um, I think it's just absolutely necessary, especially because we're not playing Puzzle. We have to play the full four count. Uh, the one Floatstone, like I say, uh, combine it with the Escape Rope for our switching options and just three Spirit Link. I think four is kind of overkill because there are turns. If you go first, you can just Mega to end your turn without the need for a link. Um, I think we get away with it, to be honest, a lot of the time. So there we go. And just rounding out with eight total energy. We need four DC, of course, the whole deck functions off of that. And the metals helps us get that protection with Magina onto our Rayquazas so that the Sizzle matchup is very much winnable. Um, so let's talk about some things that we're not playing in this deck. First of all, Puzzle of Time is gonna be the biggest thing. Um, we basically cut Puzzle of Time because we needed like some spaces um, quite simply uh, we initially had puzzle in this deck one of those things where again it hurts your shaman where you're not able to just cycle through your hand and shaman for more cards because puzzle kind of sticks there um, unless you just play it for one and then you're not very happy you'd rather it to be a different card to be honest in that situation um, it's still really good I can see people playing Ray will play two puzzle because um, if you just happen to draw into two naturally um, your turn one odds are much greater as well as having that late game uh, recovery if again you're able to get two in one um, i just wasn't hitting it consistently enough for me to really warrant it i'd rather just have speed cards had to make a couple of additions like i went up to two rod um, it meant that i played special charge and uh, it basically meant that i could add the float stone because my initial build played manaphy and there i had space for puzzle um, but i feel like mcginner does enough to warrant its place in here even though it does cost one extra slot technically because basically with Manaphy I only had one switching card because uh, Manaphy itself was a switching card um, McGinnon doesn't do that for us so we needed an extra switching option um, which is an extra slot so I had to cut the puzzle um, but basically I could really see it working in here I think if people can make the space for puzzle of time um, do so to be honest it's it's still pretty good in Ray Another option is Pokemon Center Lady. Uh, let's do it a different way. Yeah, Pokemon Center Lady. Heal 60 and removes all special conditions. This can be handy um, in like two hit walls with other Megas that can't do that much damage. The likes of Sceptile, the likes of uh, Sizzle, um, you know, Ordino, I guess, to an extent, if people are gonna play that. I don't think many people will post-rotation. Um, but Center Lady just means that a two shot can become a three hit KO and you're much happier with that regard. Um, it's a pretty cool option. The reason I don't is just because we want to keep the overall support account low for now, and I don't really find the slot for Pokemon Center Lady being too useful. Uh, Winona is another supporter we could consider. 
Um, now that we are playing more of the colourless Rayquaza, Winona could be an option. I think I would play Winona if I was making spaces for the Altaria line, because then it makes a lot of sense to play. Um, I think right now it's kind of like a 61st card um, until we make the spaces for Altaria, which is definitely an option. Um, so then on to the lack of Manaphy EX, like I was saying. Manaphy does act as that switching option, um, but personally I think you need to dedicate your turn attachments to double colorless energy too many times in this deck. If you're attaching just to move a Pokemon like you would in like Aquabox, um, it just really doesn't work out for you. You've lost a turn just by that attachment, so you kind of want it to be a Floatstone or a Escape Rope anyway. Um, so I don't feel like Manaphy warrants itself too much. Especially because there's going to be Garbodor in the format anyway, so it's something to uh, keep in mind. Uh, one thing, another reason why people like playing the Water Energy is because of Glaceon EX. And I actually really dislike Glaceon in Rayquaza. I think in theory it makes a lot of sense, um, because, you know, the likes of Raichu, the likes of uh, Zep Striker, they can't attack you. Um, but, you know, they can. They can just Lysander, because we're limited to 70 damage with the Glaceon, they can tank that and they can just Lysander pick off another Shaman or do whatever they want and at that point they've probably gone like four prizes up and they don't even care if you then finish off the Zeb Striker, they'll have other options in the deck uh, more than likely so I think Glaceon doesn't make too much sense. If you're playing it for like Mirror as well or other Mega decks, they're going to play Ranger so they're just going to Ranger through you and knock it out so I think people playing that one Glaceon slot just isn't worth it. Um, I do like it just for a physical Pokemon, <laughs> but um, other than that, I think it's too slow, especially because like you're not playing Max Elixir, you're playing Mega Turbo, so physically attaching to the Glaceon for two turns is super slow. I just don't see that working out. So um, Finally, just the slot around the Bunnelby that I currently have, basically a non-EX slot that I would like. Um, at the moment, I've got the Bunnelby. A couple of other options is going to be Absol. Whenever we're not getting one-hit KOs, um, we can sometimes get a cheeky three counters elsewhere. This actually can really help out against the likes of Giratina, um, where you can do like, and then you normally do like 150 if they put their stadium in. Um, you can do that, Cursed Eyes onto like the other Giratina or another target to soften them up whilst you two hit into them. And then the next Giratina should be a one hit KO. So Absol seems pretty good for the likes of Giratina and just other options. Um, you know, other Megas that would be harder to knock out. It's an extra Pokemon on the bench as well as sometimes preserving damage which means that we don't need to extend another pokemon in future so that's a pretty cool option a different a different uh, option is the horlucha the sudden cyclone horlucha as a single copy non-ex pokemon again all these pokemon serve the option out of being that seventh prize that people have to go through and the sudden cyclone is gonna just get rid of again pesky things in the active position that we can just gust out the way. Sometimes if there's a non-EX in the way and everything else is EX, you can just gust them up. Um, it's searchable as well, so that's pretty cool. Again, if you're playing this, you may think about Win uh, Winona in the deck because searchable escape ropes are pretty sweet. Um, finally, from there, if you're worried about mirror matches, which personally, like I keep saying, I don't think Ray's going to be big enough to warrant teching for the mirror too much. Um, there's either Zoroark, which again helps with our retreating in general, as well as having the mind jack. Uh, or, of course, you can just play Raichu yourselves um, to help out with that mirror. I know early on in Rayquaza, uh, when it first came out in Roaring Skies, people were playing like 1-1 one, one or 2-2 two, two Raichu in their builds uh, to help with mirror matches as well. So uh, that's pretty much all the options I can think of right now with the deck. At the moment, I'm quite happy with the list. Um, not going to go into a battle today because the ladder is changing like tomorrow. That's when it goes into official standard. So um, all the future videos will have one or two battle videos in it, uh, this one won't. Hopefully though, I discussed enough about Rayquaza in general. Um, it's meant to be hitting hard, very fast, and uh, basically trying to be the new Night March. <laughs> That's the best way that I can try and put it. Trying to be the pace setter of the format, be the most aggressive deck that wins just by punching through whatever's in front of it, because it hits hard and uh, fairly cheaply and consistently as well. Um, I like the McGinn for now, because I'm thinking Sizzle, is potentially an option because Scizor seems to have good matchups against this, other Megas it can handle, um, as well as options against Giratina because it gets rid of special energy with its attack sometimes. Um, so that it seems like it has answers to a few things in format. Obviously it gets over the Xerneas quite nicely and it's just quite a tanky Pokemon in general. Um, 
so I think that'll be a contender in the format. So you have to kind of tech for it for now for Rayquaza. But in general, if this is public enemy number one in terms of deck, I don't feel don't feel like Rayquaza has enough to survive. Um, it may be that the sort of dust has to, has to settle on the format a bit. Uh, we start figuring out what's good, and um, then from the ashes we can build a Rayquaza that can you know deal with the new meta game, the more expected meta. Right now we're just looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes, how we can make this as consistent and speedy as possible um, and sort of just forego whatever counters are going to come our way because right now I see a lot of lists where people want to play one or two parallel because they're worried about Rayquaza and whatever, and whatever else. I, I will say that Rayquaza, if unchecked, is clearly a very powerful deck, um, just like something like Night March would be, but throughout its career so far it's had checks in the lightning type attackers that's kept it at bay and now like we have parallel city we have giratina we have so many reasons why rayquaza can struggle um so i still feel it won't ever be the top top contender in the format but it will eventually find its place because it's too inherently strong not to really so i hope you enjoyed the analysis and the sort of discussion wanted to really kick start with a lot of you know background and theory talking because it's a new format. People are trying to gauge the best decks. I think it's only fair that I put my spin on it and uh, put where I think the deck is right now. Personally, I don't think it should be hyped as much as it is. Um, but at the same time, I think people do have to have it on the radar. And early on in regionals and cities and stuff like that, you have to think that people will bring away Kraza, Um And you have to, you know, for better or for worse, you have to tech your deck to try and have options against it if you don't play it yourselves. So there it is. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Rayquaza down below. What's your favorite pair to put with uh, Ray? Is it gonna be Magina? Is it Manaphy? Is it something else? Let me know down below and um, I'll be sure to get back to you. So hope you all enjoyed this first video of the new standard format. Next up is going to be, I believe, Xernia Skiratina. That's actually one of my personal favorites right now. And uh, yeah, should be a lot of fun. Hope you all enjoyed. Please leave a like to this video if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, but for now, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I will see you guys next time.